Hi, this is Balaji. Welcome to Brain Smart Labs. I am your trainer for Java and I am his conscious present in this laptop and together we are going to teach you your first Java program. Dude, not that growling voice. Please. Dude, just by giving a fancy intro won't help. You have to literally teach them. Hope you know that. Yes, I am aware. So what? But how? It's via video, right? There should be one-on-one -on -one interaction with the trainer. You think you can achieve that via video? Have you seen any of my video? Nope. Then shut up. Chumma noi 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 noi. But dude, what if anyone gets a doubt in between? How will you resolve it? It's their problem. Why are you worried? But dude, for heaven's sake, please stop interrupting. I have a class to teach. Come on, man. They get a doubt, they know how to resolve it. But what if I get a doubt? Ask me, na. Nanan katta kaya kaya di nille. I will answer your doubt. You know what? You are simply impossible. So what are you going to start with today? Same old stuff. History of Java, when it was launched, how it became popular, blah blah blah. Do do do. That's really boring. Okay. Can we just directly jump into programming? Well, I can't skip this part as they might ask a few related question in your interview. But anyways, as you suggest, let me keep it short and sweet. Keep your pen and paper ready. Ready? Good. Start noting down. Java was founded in the year June 1991, which was initially named as Oak. Sun Microsystems were the founders of Java, released their first public implementation as Java 1.0 in the year 1995. It was an era of C and C++ where Java came gate crashing as the most successful language which implemented OOPS using the programmer friendly C syntax. Java had an amazing feature by name Vora that is write once and run anywhere which attracted most of the developers to use it for application development. Java was very secure, strictly type checked and had the best memory management which made the language even more popular among developers. Around 930 million download Java runtime environment every year and over 3 billion devices including laptops to data centers run on Java today. Now let us understand some of the basic advantages of application development in Java. I have explained you in my previous class that an application is nothing but a set of programs. Agree? Yes, you had explained that while defining applications. I remember. You must also remember my statement to build programs we need a programming language. Yeah, and you had also told Java is one of the best programming languages for application development. So what do you think programs are built on? Well, in my college they had taught me programs are built on logics. So what do you think these logics are? Well, logics can be defined as building blocks of a program, if I am not wrong. Good. Now imagine you are writing a set of 100 programs to build an application. How many logics you are supposed to write? Okay, one application is equal to some 100 programs, 100 programs into n number of logics. Dude, it's countless. So every time you write an application, there will be few logics which are repeated again and again in many regions of the application. Agree with me? Yes, definitely. And in most of the cases, these logics can be used in other applications too. Now answer this. What do you think is a major headache for every programmer who is into application development? Of course, what else it might be? Writing the same logic again and again. Bullseye, you guessed it right. So, do you think there is any solution for this? Seriously boss, I don't know. Now, this is where Java comes into programmer's life to save him from writing repeated logics again and again. Some of the best programmer friendly logics used in every application are given to you by Sun for free as libraries. They are also called as Application Programming Interfaces, also known as APIs, which are a boon to every programmer today. Awesome! You mean to say application development is very easy in Java as compared to other languages like C and C++? That's right. That is a major advantage of using Java for programming an application. 
most of the developers will concentrate on writing only business logics in an application and for the remaining commonly used logics they rely on these libraries now this avoids reinventing of feed again and again helping a programmer to code faster apis are nothing but libraries filled with logic to help an application developer got it you must also know java supports with apis for all four kinds of applications that is standalone web based distributed and your mobile applications wow now that's really an advantage no wonder java is hot favorite among programmers okay now that winds up the theory part you want me to explain the various versions of java or you will learn all by yourself by seeing wikipedia guru hai dot namaskara sakne theory bitra adanne koi taar kya please start with program see i want to teach you more theory but my conscious is not letting me talk tomorrow don't blame me that i didn't teach anything okay installation of java go to google and start searching for java development kit or jdk download click on the oracle link to download java is currently owned by a company named oracle so it's always better to use their website to download now choose a suitable download file for your operating system and download jdk into your machine now install the jdk in your computer preferably in c drive by using the world famous method of clicking next 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 and finish as the you read everything while installing mustya salpa path setting for java development kit to do the path setting for your jdk follow my instructions and take my lead go to the control panel navigating through your start menu and then in the next screen click on system and security where we are going to alter some of the key settings as an administrator search for the icon named system and click find the advanced system setting menu which is present on your left and click the same now go to advanced tab and click on environment variables environment variables is a place where we allocate paths for executable files it's very important note it down or you might forget it later now in system variables create a new variable by name java_home whose value is the path of jdk installed in your computer well in my system to reach there i need to go to c/programfiles/java here you will find two folders by name jdk and jre please click on the jdk folder and not the jre this is the common mistake most of the rookies do understand jdk stands for java development kit and jre stands for java runtime environment I will explain you more on this topic later but for now understand we are setting the path for development kit and not the runtime environment copy this address above and paste it inside variable value click on okay creating a java home variable is a general practice used by all top programmers this directs us to the root path of the installed java location whenever we try to access this java home variable enclosed by percentage symbols it will be replaced by the value of the actual path stored in this variable that we have created over here now scroll down the system variables and you will have a variable by name path path variable contains the address of all directories containing essential .exe files please note it down edit the path variable by appending semicolon percentage java underscore home percentage slash bin semicolon and click ok well you might feel confused at this stage why are we doing all these settings all i have to say is simply follow my instructions and take my lead i will not run anywhere without explaining nanen odo bidalla illinda artha aitha ena artha aglilva nan magad artha bek class path settings for ide create a new variable by name class path inside system variables now if you ask me what is class path variable used for class path variable will be looked by various editors and ides to find lib/tools.jar note it down it's very important the tools.jar contain essential libraries to execute all your programs i will explain you this concept later but for now 
Just create the variable and give the value as seen on screen. Verification. Well, after doing all the above settings, you need to verify them if it's working or not. Now to verify our settings, go to the command prompt and type J-A-V-A-C and press enter. Kaboom! You should be getting some long message like this as seen on screen. Now type the command J-A-V-A and press enter. Getting a similar response as seen on screen? If yes, you have successfully installed Java and have done the correct path setting. Congratulations! As I own a Windows operating system, I am showing demonstrations specific to that. If you are using a different operating system or having trouble doing the path setting in your computer, just Google path settings and class path settings for Java. Let it be your Windows system or Linux system or Mac system. Find the changes, rectify the steps and apply the same. Never give up so easily if you are not getting how to set up your machine. All I have taught you is some of the basic installation and settings. That's it. Remember one thing, your days of spoon feeding are over. From now on, you are all engineers and engineers are people who build things. I know everybody are not born with a manual how to install Java. But it's high time you should break out from your shell, Google here and there and try finding out why are you not able to complete the installation. If you give up at this early stage, you are simply not fit to be a software engineer. Mark my words. Devra, Saknin Kate, explain us why you did the path settings. Understanding path settings. Now let me explain you this with a simple example. Consider you are having Google Chrome application installed in your system. Even a 7th standard kid knows the starting point of execution of this software is chrome.exe file present in this location. Now if I want to execute this exe file from my command prompt window, we need to be in the same location where the exe file is present. If yes, all I have to do is type chrome and press enter to start this application. Do you agree with me? exe file is the starting point of execution of any program and to execute it, we have to go to its own location on the DOS prompt. I think so everybody knows that. Yagotilla. Sorry, hoi to Bharata Udhara. Now, if you are in a different folder structure on the DOS prompt and then try to run those exe files which are not available in that location, your DOS prompt will display. Chrome is not recognized as an internal or an external command, operable program or batch file. Ting! Correct, na? Yeah, it means system cannot find the exe file in that particular location. Now observe, java underscore home is a variable pointing to the path where you have installed java. That is c slash program file slash java slash jdk 1.8 blah blah blah. Now if you go inside the bin folder that is c slash program file slash java slash jdk 1.8 slash bin, it contains essential exe files like javac.exe and java.exe which are the starting point for compilation and execution of any java program. Once any command is entered on the DOS prompt, the system initially searches for the exe file in the current location the DOS prompt is currently pointing to. If the exe file is not present, it then searches for the exe file in all the directory locations mentioned in the path variable separated by a semicolon. The search will proceed till all the locations in path variable are covered. If your DOS prompt finds the exe file matching the command in any of the above location, it executes the exe file fair and square. And if it doesn't find the exe file, you will get Java C is not recognized as an internal or an external command, operable program or a batch file. Ding! And that is why we appointed java underscore home slash bin in our path variable as this is the place where our essential Java related exe commands can be found. After appending this line in your path variable, these exe files present in this location can be executed from anywhere in your system. In simple words, it can be executed from any location your DOS prompt is pointing to. But dude, how to believe you? I am a conscious, not Kallapuri, okay? I don't take things just for granted. You have to prove me. 
Okay, to prove the same, let me do some reverse engineering. I'm going to remove the path setting I made here in the line previously and try accessing Java C and Java commands from various locations like users, desktop, etc. where the exe file does not exist, for which I get an error. Having removed the path setting for Java Home's bin folder, these command files are invisible in these locations to our command window. But if we go into the location where javac.exe and java.exe are present, that is c slash program file slash java slash jdk 1.8 slash bin, the command gets invoked as you can see here. Please note that we have removed the path setting and our command is still working. The reason is very simple. The exe files we are invoking are present in the current location our DOS prompt is pointing to. Now let us add back the path settings and give it a try from various locations. Aha! Now there's the proof. Your commands are working even in this remote location the DOS prompt is pointing to currently. That is D drive slash blah blah blah. Poda po. You were very lucky this time. Don't think you can escape from me next time. I'll be watching. Hmm. Hmm. The reason behind this was your operating system is searching for the invoked exe files in the location you have provided inside the path variable. Cool bro, understood, fair and square. In the latest version of Java 8, I don't think you have to do the path setting circus as a path by name c slash program data slash oracle slash java slash java path is pre-added during installation of Java. Understanding class path settings. Let us now understand the class path variable we just created, which is referring to a file by name tools.jar. Tools.jar is present in the location java underscore home slash lib. The file tools.jar contains all essential class files which are used in programming. The editors we use for programming such as Eclipse, MyEclipse and NetBeans search for this variable by name class path to reach tools.jar file. So as a kind gesture, we programmers set the class path to this location to help our editors to find it. That's a basic funda. Now that brings us to the point where we start our first Java program. Yes! Your, Your first, first Java, Java program. program. Now my dear students, do as I say. Make notes for every step I tell and stop bothering yourself with unnecessary doubts. My first advice to you is follow the industry standard conventions for naming any file or a folder. I'm gonna give you four rules and I expect you to follow it carefully without fail. But rules are made to be broken. You not transport so ADMI. Admi. Create a new workspace directory in your drive to store all your programs. Create two more directories inside workspace directory as seen below. From now on, all your basic programming concepts which will be coded using simple text editor will be stored in this location, that is, basic examples. And all your advanced programming concepts which will be coded using advanced IDEs like Eclipse will be stored in this location that is advanced examples folder. And that brings me to explain rule number one. Organize your programs. Organizing one's own program should be the basic thumb rule of every programmer. The reason being your companies who will be hiring you will be paying you for the quality work you do. Better the organizing, better the quality. If you don't maintain the quality, there are chances of you getting fired from the company. Your choice. Go inside basic examples folder and create a new folder by name 01 simple program. This is the location where we are going to save our first Java program. Please note the naming convention for this folder should be program number followed by a name. No special symbols or space should be used. Now go to the start menu and open the notepad application. Click on file and press save as and save the file in the location you just created above. That is the workspace, basic examples and 01 simple program. Save the file as demo.java with D as uppercase. Use double quotes while saving or you will land up in soup later. And that brings me to explain rule number two. Go with standard naming conventions while naming any folder or a file in programming. One of the common conventions used to name a Java file is camel casing. Camel casing? Hearing it for the first time, now what is that? 
Camel casing is a naming convention used by developers worldwide when there are two or more words in a name. For example, if you want to name a Java file as hello world, I have to name it as hello world.java. Hope you can notice the camel hump in between words. And the file name is more readable here. And if you are asking me, why these conventions? Conventions I teach you are used worldwide by top programmers in most of the IT companies. Following the prescribed conventions will help you maintain your code time to time. If not done by you, it will be maintained by someone else. So it's kind of a hard and fast tool that all developers should use standard conventions prescribed while programming. Dude, is there any particular reason why we are using double quotes while saving? What if we don't use it? Answer is simple. If you use double quotes around demo.java and then save the file, your file will be saved something like this. As you have used double quotes, that .txt file extension will not be added. Some people tend to miss these quotes and try saving the file without using them. As you can see clearly, the file will be saved as a text document and you will get the resultant file something like this, that is demo.java.txt, which is not at all desirable. Well, if you tend to do mistakes all the time with these file extensions, it's always a better option for a programmer to unhide the file extension types for all files. And if you ask me how to do that, if you are using Windows 7, type ALT plus T. Go to Tools, click on Folder Options, click on View tab and uncheck Hide Extensions of File Types. That does the job. The above setting will help you visually see the extension of all the files in your Windows file system. With the above feature enabled, you can also change the file extension by just renaming the file. Please note, your source code will be considered as Java file only if it has the extension .java and not .txt. That brings me to explain rule number 3. Follow what I say. Don't try to do anything stupid. This is the problem with you guys. You commit mistakes here and there and get royally screwed up. Later you start blaming Java is difficult, Java is difficult. So my kind advice to you is follow what I say. If I say use double quotes, you have to use double quotes. If I say use uppercase, you have to use uppercase. Writing your first Java program. Now it's the time we start writing our first Java program. Right click on demo.java, the file we just created and press edit. Inside the notepad window, start writing your first Java program. C-L-A-S-S class with C lowercase, D-E-M-O demo with D uppercase. Open the flower basis, go to the next line and give one tab space. Now type P-U-B-L-I-C public, S-T-A-T-I-C static, V-O-I-D void, M-A-I-N main with all lowercase alphabets. Open small parenthesis beside main and type the word S-T-R-I-N-G string with S uppercase and A-R-G-S arcs followed by opening and closing of square brackets. Close the small parenthesis and move on to the next line. Take one tab space and open one more flower braces. Go to the next line and take two tab spaces here. Using a frequent tab spaces in your code to make it look legible is known as indentation. It is compulsory for you to keep your code neat and clean. Now start typing SYSTEM system with a capital S dot O U T out dot P R I N T L N print L N and open small parenthesis. So we type the text hello world in quotes. Now close the parenthesis and end the statement with a semicolon. In the next two lines, close the flower braces which we have opened few lines above with appropriate tab spacing. The words highlighted in blue are also known as keywords and they are always in lowercase. Any mistake you do with the spelling or the case, you will get a compilation error later. Similarly, D of demo, S of string and S of system are in uppercase. Make sure the file name you have used and class name you have written are one and the same. That is capital D, E, M and O. Any mistake you commit, the compiler will serve you with an error. 
make sure opening and closing of flower braces, opening and closing of small parentheses, opening and closing of big brackets, the dots used in between, opening and closing of double quotes, and last but not the least, the semicolon to end the statement are present. Else, your compiler will slap you with an error. And that brings me to explain rule number four. Type the program with letter to letter accuracy. Please note that Java is a strictly type checked language. Any mistake you do, even in lowercase and uppercase, it will not allow you to compile. Make sure you type the same program with letter to letter accuracy before compiling. Now save the file and there you go. You are all set to compile and run the program. Compilation and execution. Open the command window. If your program is stored in a different drive location, change it as shown here. Copy the complete file destination where you have saved the program and paste it with a change directory command on your DOS prompt. Now this will help you reach the exact file location on your DOS prompt. Now the most important part. Enter the command javac demo.java which will actually compile the file. Please note, if you have committed any mistake while typing the file, you will get a compilation error at this stage. Correct the mistakes in your program and repeat the procedure to reach this point once again. And please, don't get disheartened as you have committed a mistake. Mistakes happen so that you can improvise next time. Observe where you have committed mistakes and make sure you don't commit that next time. This is the place where you actually learn. Once our compilation succeeds, type Java demo with D as caps and there you go. Hooray! You have just completed the first Java program. Congratulations! Okay, wait, wait, wait. I have a doubt now. Why did we change the location in the DOS prompt when we have actually done the path setting? Of course, we have done the path setting. But it's only for javac.exe and java.exe which are located in your Java Home's bin folder but not your source code. Your source code is present in this location and that means we have to reach there to execute it. Understand one thing, to eat Chinese food, we have to go to a Chinese restaurant and not to some Dershini where they prepare masala dosa. Likewise, your source code is available in this location. That means we have to reach only there on the DOS prompt to execute it and not to some other random location. But to execute your javac.exe and java.exe commands, we can execute from any location as you have made the path setting only for these files present in your Java Home's bin folder. Make a note of all steps and try it once or twice. Understand the path setting concepts clearly. Do text us your doubts on WhatsApp if you are struck somewhere in between so that we can solve it for you. You understanding the subject is our topmost priority. Subscribe to this channel and stay updated for our next video release. This is Balaji Kayas signing out. Until next video, till then, bye bye. Dude, 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 wait. I didn't say bye. Okay.